it's Pam. Welcome to another board game design video. Thanks so much for, oh my God, <sighs> already. <laughs> Hello there, it's Pam. Welcome to another board game design video. I first wanted to thank you all so much for subscribing. Just a few months ago, I had like seven subscribers and now I have almost 500. And so I wanna thank you so much because uh, once I get to a thousand, I can potentially make money from these videos, uh, which would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's just been great um, seeing all your comments and all your likes and all your messages. So thank you so much for subscribing. And if you're not subscribed yet, I hope you do because it really is a big help. If I can make money from these videos, then I can make more videos, uh, which I really enjoy doing and can focus more on board games, making videos, doing all that stuff that I really love um, and maybe less of the day job. The more subscribers I get, the more videos I can make. And so, yeah, I'm really glad that you're here and uh, I hope that you're subscribed. All right, enough. And I will just make a note that we're a lot closer this video because um, it's at night. I finished my day job and I worked till eight and now it's like 10.30, I think. So there's no natural light. I have my tripod with a light. And so for you to see me, I have to be a little bit closer. But the reason I don't have my tripod normally like this is because it's on my table. And every time I touch the table, it shakes the camera. It's super flimsy, so. I'm gonna to try to not do that. So today we're going to be talking about cell sheets. So what is a cell sheet? A cell sheet is a one page document that summarizes your game that you give to publishers that are potentially interested in making your game. So it's a document that you have when you pitch your game to publishers, which is an overview with the most important parts of your game included in it. So I'm just gonna get right into it and show you some examples of what I'm talking about. So I have brought up some of the sell sheets that I've made for some of my games, and I'm just gonna show you some examples. So this one is for Blob Party. Uh, you can see I have the title, and I, well, I'm, I'm gonna go into all the different specific parts of the sell sheet in a second, but I'm just gonna give you these as an example to show you. So yeah, so this was my party game that I pitched last year. A couple publishers were interested, so I sent this sell sheet to them along with a video. So if a publisher is interested, they will almost always ask for you to send them a sell sheet or if you're in person to hand them a, a sell sheet. So if you are going to be pitching to publishers in person, make sure you have these printed off and ready to go in case a publisher is interested in your game. This one was for a game called Chuck and Cherries that I made that actually used the box as kind of like a Plinko board and then you dropped cherries, you dropped little balls down that would bounce down and you would see which basket they would end up in at the bottom. Here's Courier City. I've talked about this game before. Uh, this one I actually used photos of the setup so you can see what the game looks like on the table. This one I actually forgot about until I was going through my games to find cell sheets for this video. Um, it was a reimagining of the classic game, The Amazing Labyrinth. This one was a no. Actually, the majority of these uh, games were rejected from publishers. Um, some of them weren't, but most of them were. This one was. I do like the layout of this one. It's different than from the others with the image up top nice and big. Uh, this one was a Little Mermaid themed one. I remember when I made this one, I was very proud of it and I thought it looked really great. And now looking at it, I'm kind of seeing a few things that maybe I would have changed, but Overall, it gets the idea across. This was uh, a fun one that I really liked and I saw some potential in it, but um, nothing really happened with it. I might bring something like it back. Um, it was a push your luck uh, style uh, pirate game. But there's one big thing about this that I don't like. And so think about what you think maybe doesn't work so well with this one and we'll see if we are thinking the same thing in a minute. And here's where the wind blows. Um, very minimal text, nice big photos showing a turn. I really like this one. So this is the one I'm going to use as an example and go more into detail about the different parts of the um, cell sheet, things that you definitely need to have and you want to have for sure. I picked it for a few reasons. One, there's very minimal text. So in your cell sheets, you do not want a ton of text. And that was my main issue with Loot and Limits, that pirate uh, push your luck game. There was just, it was just quite a lot of text. Maybe you thought my main issue with it was there wasn't any color, 
I was actually fine with that and that's something that I'll talk about in a minute. But for now, let's just go through the different sections of a cell sheet. So obviously at the top, you want to have your uh, title nice and big. So this is a, a version of headbands that I had, uh, that I had made up for a publisher. Um, this one, I'm actually still waiting to hear back from them. I'm assuming it's going to be a no. So that's fine. If it doesn't work with them, I think it's a pretty cool game. So I might just not make it headbands and just use the stencils part. Anyway, the uh, title is nice and big. You have the this image here of the stencil. So you kind of get the idea of the game pretty quickly. And then right here you have the just the one liner of the game. So then below the short one liner about the game, then you can go into a bit more detail about how the game plays, what, what it's about, and that's it. So that's all the text for how to play the game. I do recognize that this is a party game um, where the wind blows, career city, those examples are strategy games, but more, well, a bit more complicated than a party game. And you can see that they had just about the same amount of text. So even if you have a complex strategy game, you definitely want to keep your text minimal on a cell sheet. When I send my cell sheet, I do usually send my rules as well. So then publishers can read through the rules if they have questions and they want to learn more about how the game actually plays, especially for a more complicated game. Then below uh, that, I have some of the parts of the cell sheet that you absolutely want to make sure you have. So how long is the game? What's the duration of the game? What's the age range? What's your player count? And then the contents. So these parts are essential to have in your cell sheet. You absolutely want to make sure that you have those things. Those are very important to publishers. They need to know that information. On the other side of the cell sheet, I include some images to help illustrate what the game looks like and how it plays. I have it numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's fairly easy to move through that to read and understand how the game plays. So then at the bottom, super important, absolutely critical, you need to have your contact information. If you give a cell sheet to a publisher and they have no way of getting back to you, what's the point? So make sure you have your name, your email address, your phone number, which I blacked out here. And if you have a website, that's good to include that as well. Okay, so let's talk in more detail about cell sheets and what to have, what not to have. One important thing is to not have a bunch of text boxes like here and there, making people work to find the information. You can see that in most of my examples, I had all the text on the left-hand side. That's a very good thing to have in your cell sheet. When people look at things, they generally look from top left down. So I usually have the text on the left-hand side and then a, a turn example on the other side. Some designers like to include a section for the mechanics used in the game. You can definitely have that somewhere. I like to incorporate that into the text of the how to play and the overview of the game rather than having a separate text box that people need to, to look at. So when you're making a cell sheet, don't worry too much about making it look perfect. I said this before in my videos and I'll say it again, publishers will change the art. They'll make their own art. Uh, they won't use your art like 99% of the time. So don't stress about making your cell sheet look amazing. That's why that Loot Limits one, I didn't care so much that there wasn't color. Um, I just took some photos from some images from clip art. Most of the images you saw on my uh, cell sheets are just clip art. I just googled what I needed and then just plop those into the cell sheet. Well, yeah, so with Luton Limits, I had the treasure chest, then I used some other shapes and things to make cards to show the basic setup of the game, and that was totally fine. And if you don't use any color, it lets the publisher kind of use their own imagination about what the game can maybe look like, what the colors could look like. That's one thing I remember learning when I did some graphic design courses is that you want your, if you're designing a logo, you want to make sure that it is great, just black and white. You want to make sure that the message is conveyed, that it looks good, that it's intriguing, just without any color at all. Sometimes people use color to try to add that interest and make things pop when they really just need to focus on making sure that the messaging is good, the text is good, the basic layout is good. One of the other things I learned from some of the courses that I've taken just about design is that Contrast is really important and really great. That's what really does make things pop and stand out. So I know I just said that one without any color is fine, but 
but you can have a lot of contrast and make things pop without a ton of different colors. So you can have a few different colors and differences of light and dark. You can even bold certain words, like in some of my cell sheets I had bolded and even italicized certain words I really wanted to stand out. You wanna make your overview of the game, the font slightly bigger, I would say bolded as well to make that really jump out. And then I'll just reiterate the importance of including your contact information, including your phone number. You wanna make it as easy as possible for the publisher to reach out to you, to connect with you. All right, so what programs did I use to make these cell sheets? I used Google Draw. Not too long ago, I used used InDesign and Illustrator and different Creative Suite programs, but they do cost money and now they're a subscription basis. You have to pay every month for them and I didn't want to do that. So I learned how to make these cell sheets and all my print and play files, all of my, most of my prototypes in Google Draw. So it's part of Google Drive. It's one of their apps that they have in there and it gets the job done. You don't need to spend a lot of money or a lot of time on these things. Just like your prototypes, you want to convey your message clearly and effectively and not spend a ton of money and time making it look perfect. So I included a link to a cell sheet template in the description of this video, which you can click and use if you like. If you have any tips for the cell sheets that you make, please be sure to include those in the comments. And of course, if you have a question about cell sheets or anything that I talked about today, be sure to leave a comment below and I will definitely respond. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, um, if you learned anything, if you got any value out of it, I hope that you're subscribed and I hope that you like this video. As always, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Party Hat Games. And that's all for now. Take care. <laughs>